Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is video number three in my series entitled Short Subjects, and the topic today is what is climb milling and what is conventional milling? So I'm standing here next to the horizontal closing mill, and we'll talk about climb milling and conventional milling on this type of machine, and then we'll go down into the other shop and do the same thing with the vertical mill, which is what probably most of you guys out there have. So let's begin. Here are some great pictures from a textbook showing the difference between climb milling and conventional milling. Notice the direction of rotation of the cutter for climb milling and the direction that the work is being fed into the cutter. It appears that the cutter is climbing up over the work and that's where they get the name climb milling. And then looking at this picture of conventional milling, you can see that the feed is against the direction of the cutter rotation. Okay, here's an example of conventional milling and the cutter is running that way. Never run a cutter backwards, but the work will be fed into the cutter like this. Now the disadvantage here with conventional milling is there is a tendency for the work to be pulled up by the action of the cutter and out of the vise, causing it to crash and break the cutter and ruin the work and things like that. Also, most of the chips are deposited right here, which means that we are cutting and recutting the swarf constantly over and over, which leads to more rapid uh, tool wear and uh, a poorer finish. Remember that conventional milling was the standard practice on horizontal milling machines until relatively recent when they came up with ball type lead screws and anti-backlash mechanisms. Okay, here's an example of conventional milling. This is aluminum. The cutter is three inch diameter and about quarter inch wide. I'm gonna do this without any coolant or lubricant so you can see what I'm doing. Now there may be times when the cutter appears to be revolving backwards with the so-called wagon wheel effect. And now an example of climb milling. The cutter will revolve in the same direction, but I'm feeding the other way. Remember that the cutter is literally trying to climb up, and if the cut is too deep, there's a very real chance of breaking the cutter, especially if the backlash gets taken up suddenly. This machine does not have a whole lot of backlash. It's not worn too badly, so let's see what happens here now. Again, this is climb milling. Here's the example from the horizontal mill, conventional milling, and climb milling, and you can see that the finish is a little better, I believe, with the climb milling. All right, now that you understand that on a horizontal mill, let's go down and use the bridge port to do something similar, because more than likely, you guys at home have bridge ports, not horizontal mills, but the principle is the same. Okay, I'm in the basement shop. This is the bridge port. For those of you that do not understand backlash, and there'll be more backlash in older, worn out machines, but essentially it's how much table movement there is without turning the screws. Let me zoom in and show you that on a dial indicator. Okay, watch the dial indicator as I jerk on the table. There's what, 40 thousandths. Actually, it's more like 20. Okay, yeah, it's about 20 thousandths. After all that effort of setting up a dial indicator, I realized, why don't we just look at the DRO? So, watch up here. All right, now you know what backlash is 
and when the uh, cutter starts climbing, it can pull that 20 or 25 thousandths out and break the cutter or give you a bad finish at the least. Okay, this is a three quarter inch carbide cutter, aluminum, and I'm going to mill right across, square it up. This is conventional milling. Watch where the chips fly. <laughs> Okay, kind of a nasty cut, a nasty finish as the chips get embedded into the uh, finished surface. So what I'm going to do now is raise the cutter about halfway up the work and I'm going to come back 50 thousandths more and then we can compare the two. Okay, climb milling. Okay, again on the bottom, this is conventional milling. See how rough it appears to be? And this is climb milling. Now what I often do is rough cut with conventional milling and then take about 10 thousandths off climb milling for my final pass or my finish cut. Now I want to show you one last thing. I'm going to make a slot. I won't go all the way. This again is three quarter inch. I'm going 100 thousandths deep. And you will probably find that on one side of the slot, the finish is better than on the other side because in effect, one side of the slot is conventional mill, milling and the other side is, a, is climb milling. So, so watch this, see what you think. Okay, looking at the slot here, this isn't as dramatic as I thought it would be, but the far side here is climb milling. I'm not talking about the bottom, I'm talking about the side of the slot. And then on the other side is conventional milling. Perhaps you can see that it isn't quite as good. Doesn't show up too well here. Well, there's been a lot of videos on this subject. I myself have made several. Hope you learned something about this. Climb milling, conventional milling, this is Mr. Pete saying so long for now and I'll see you next time. Okay, as I promised you in uh, short subject number two, I was going to give you the answers to what is wrong as far as safety and general machine shop practice. So if you didn't see short subject number two, you need to go back and see that. But here is what is wrong in that video. First of all, the guard is missing from the gear train and is down here. Never operate a machine without a guard. Now, I know there is no guard around the belt here, but that is the way these machines were sold. And in fact, I should make a guard for this. I did that on several other machines and made videos of that, but that could be a future project. Also, flammables such as this gas can should never be anywhere near electrical items or for that matter, anywhere around where you're working, they should be stored in a safety cabinet. Also, there is no cap on this gas can. Okay, there's at least six things that are wrong here. To start with, never leave the chuck key in the chuck. And a rag should never be around rotating items such as the chuck or the lead screw. Could wrap this up and draw you into it or at the very least, bend the lead screw on you. Now, as far as the setup here, all I'm gonna do is face this half inch shaft to length and square up the end, but I've got about five inches hanging out, way, way too much. That work is going to flex and possibly even bend. Never leave a wrench in that position because it could strike a chuck or a dog or something depending on the setup. Always run that back like this or take it off altogether. I like to leave it in this position myself. All right, there's way, way too much tool hanging out of the tool holder. It should be choked up short. And of course, the tool holder itself is hanging out 
way too far. That also should be choked up about at this point for maximum rigidity. Also, the tool post is hanging too far out of the compound. Bad practice. I may be nitpicking here, but I have run the compound up as far as it could go. Therefore, there is too much hanging out here. Also, that can cause flexing and lack of rigidity, which might affect the surface finish. Two things wrong here in regards to this file. First of all, never use a file on a lathe, or even on the bench for that matter, without a handle. And secondly, don't lay your file across the ways because it will nick it or damage it. You should never lay tools on the lathe bed. And I know what some of you are gonna say, well, you did it, you damaged it already. Did not, I put tape on the backside so that I would be setting a good example. And these safety glasses ought to be on my face, not hanging here from the tailstock. Well, do you see anything else wrong? Possibly there is that I missed. Well, I hope you liked this, and I will see you in short subject number four. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and click the like button and all of that other good stuff that might help me a little bit here with my channel. I'll see you next time.